treaty was the initial terms and conditions of agreement. I happened to have got a hold of a lawyer. I was sitting in the back of a, a treaty meeting, being half or deaf at that time. I couldn't hear nothing. So I said, I just walked off, sat in the back. And there was this plump old boy sitting down in the back, in the back there. And we were chatting, and he says, what are you doing here? I asked him, he says, and he says, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, well, I can't hear them. And he says, well, they can't hear me either. <laughs> I'm the government lawyer. I says, no kidding. You're the legal representation. You're the legal representation, representative of the Canadian government? Yep. And they how come? I said, you know, because that's the way the agreement went. It says they have a lawyer. The federal government has a lawyer there. The Indians have a lawyer and everybody in these dog has a lawyer there. What if you're a legal, you know, like entity like the provincial government and stuff like that. And um, I said, no kidding. I says, how many parties are there in the Indian Act? He says, six. And I says, you mean you guys all get paid? Yep, we're at treaty meetings for four months a year, and we get our one year pay for that. And I thought, holy Christ, you know. And he said, I says, well, what do you do? He says, oh. I um, packed this around from meeting to meeting, and he says, when I'm watching TV at after the meetings uh, in my uh, motel or something, he says, I might thumb through with it, and then I bring it back to the office and have the secretary file it. I says, and that's it. <laughs> I thought, holy Christ. Then he explained to me about the uh, terms and conditions of agreement as far as pay for the land is concerned, the crown land for Canada is if you, if the federal government owns it, they will pay five times the current real estate value for that to the, I'm not sure how the people who have that title or whatever it is, like, like the provincial government has crown land or something like that, they will get five times the assessed value. And I thought, oh, five, two, pretty good deal, you know. And then privately owned land, seven times. And I thought, let's see, holy cow, you know. And um, so we bought this land up here, three and a half million. The logging outfit who owns it will quietly under the table get seven times three and a half million for it. You know, and it's that um, Clumbrio Creek land there that they logged off. That was uh, Ill K&M's land, and they put it in um, three people's names where they could log it. And they uh, to put, uh, there was Dorothy Jones, um, Marvin McClurg, Tracy, Charlie. And they got 1,200 hectares or something like that. They're supposed to be, the land was assessed at 12, I think 12 million or something like that, I forget. Anyway, a few million. So I said, now let's see. That means they'll get seven times the assessed value for that. And now let's see, Bill K sold it to the Indians. He must have, which is kind of, re it's legal in the States. I'll, I'll, um, sell, you buy the land off me, Bill. Here's the money. Okay, you buy the land. Yep, take the money back. Thank you. Sign it over to your name. That's, uh, we go to jail for that in the States. But in Canada, you can do it. So, you blown up and, no. How and why they're going to be paid is going to be awkward for me because what did Ilkay, that guy who was, 
how, why, and how is he going to be concerned with it? I thought, now let's see, he must have a, you know, a holding or something like that, a trust or say, contract with them and say, okay, when you pay, when you, government pays for it, I get half or something like, you know, in their contract on a resale or something like that, you know. So, you know, there are a lot of things that the public doesn't really, well, like the forestry, you know, they don't say it on check news, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's all skipped over, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very.